Welcome to the world of MMA Lockup. In-depth interviews, colorful commentary, expert analysis, spot-on predictions, controversial rankings, and powerful perspective on the breaking news in the world of combat sports. So strap in, hold on, and prepare for launch. MMA Lockup. Welcome, everybody, to another week of MMA Lockup. I'm your host, Jeremy Hurt. Make sure you check out the website. That's MMALockup.com. Also, follow us on Facebook and Twitter at MMA Lockup. Lots of stuff to go over this week. Obviously, we had UFC on Fox 9 last weekend. Demetrius Johnson defends his flyweight title against Joseph Benavidez. Uriah Faber moves on up the Bantamweight rankings. He'll face the winner of... Hennen Barrow and Dominic Cruz after a dominant victory over Michael McDonald. Lots of things going on in the MMA world. We're having ourselves another interview-driven show here at MMA Lockup because, as the tagline says, we bring the fight to you. We're going to start off with an interview that I had the fortune to record with Don McGuire, UFC fight photographer, earlier this week. We're going to split that into two parts since it was a fairly long interview. So we're going to start out with the first part right now, and you'll get the last part at the end of the show. In between, Chris Matthews had a chance to speak with Uriah Faber, the alpha dog over at Team Alpha Male, concerning his victory over Michael McDonald, uh, everything going on in his career and his life right now. Again, uh, definitely the next challenger for that bantamweight title after Cruz Burrell. After that, Shannon Knapp. Boy, how exciting is this? The president and founder of Invicta Fighting Championship. So a, a very important person in this sport, a key figure in the sport of mixed martial arts. And again, we will finish up the show with more Don McGuire. But why wait? Let's get this thing started right now. Here is the first part of the two-part interview with Don McGuire. On the phone, another member of the MMA lockup team, man I have much, much respect for, one of the best fight photographers in the game, I'm talking mixed martial arts, boxing, Muay Thai, you name it, a little bit of it all, Don McGuire. Don, brother, how are you doing today? Well, I'm doing good today, sir. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be on the show and uh, be able to be interviewed by you. It's just been kind of a disheartening month for me with a with the loss of, uh, you know, starting with Barry, leading up to Joe Camacho just a few days ago, so... The fight community is is in a mourning right now, but uh, it's time for all of us to pick back up and and get going again. That's what Mr. Camacho and and all of our friends that have passed away recently would want us to do. And uh, so I'm going to pick up my cam and and rock Silva versus Weedman and and uh, respect for Mr. Camacho. And, and you said it, man. It's been boy. It's, it seems like there's been a lot of tragedy around the sport here lately. Mr. Camacho, Joe Camacho, also. Uh, Shane Del Rosario, who was actually supposed to be fighting on this card originally, uh, had, of course had a heart attack and died. It's just it's been a uh, it's been a rough month, like you said. You 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 were privileged enough to know Mr. Camacho. What what can you tell us about Joe Camacho? We, you know everyone we've talked to has spoken very very highly. Obviously a huge figure in the sport. Well, yeah, um, there isn't a, a person that I've ever met in my whole career that could ever ever, ever say a bad thing about Mr. Camacho. I I had the the privilege of about about two years ago, um, a group came at me wanting to get Joe back into Bellator, and uh, I generally don't like to tell people things that I do and, and, and fighters that I help. And to make a long story short, I got Joe his, his last chance back in Bellator, and uh, you know it was a great great opportunity for him. And uh, you know to get the call that that he had passed away, it, it, it devastated me. But at the same time, um, it was an honor to be able to to get Joe his, his last final wishes and to get back into Bellator, you know, one last time. And, you know, it, it, a lot of people don't know that Mikey Beltran, the world-famous UFC referee, wouldn't even exist if it wasn't for Joe Camacho. Um, they were high school buddies. Um, you know, we were just all one great core group. And, and like you said, there's been a lot of losses this last few months. And uh, starting with Barry from Tough Enough and Zach Cummings' dad, um, everybody, but Mr. Camacho, uh, was, Joe was probably my favorite fighter of everybody because, you know, like I said, there isn't a person in the world that can say anything bad about him. He was just that integrable and, and that humble. And he was willing to do anything and everything for just anybody, even if he knew you're not. I, I think the loss when you lose people like that, I think it, it kind of makes a statement. It's one of those, uh, Lord works in mysterious ways type deals. It, it kind of t- shows you, uh, 
you know, this is why you live your life the way you live it. So, so that, you know, you never know what tomorrow brings, if tomorrow will even come. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Um, that, that's true. I mean, most people don't know that, uh, Mr. Camacho, uh, woke up at four thirty in, in the morning and, uh, you know, and then he, he passed away and, you know, it took me as a shock and, you know, I found out probably about three hours after this occurred from, you know, our elite corps. And, you know, I even found myself not even wanting to pick my camera up anymore. And, uh, I've reached out to, you know, Dana White and a lot of other people, and uh, they're telling me that I need to pick my camera up, and, and they're right. I do need to pick my camera up, and, and, and in respect of all the friends that I've lost, and, and keep, continue doing what I'm doing in the sport. Um, you know, Sunjun Park, you know, sent me a message telling me that um, the sport wouldn't be the same um, if I was to leave it, and I've been getting that a lot lately, and I'm starting to feel that way too. You know, if I was to walk away from the sport, I would feel like that would be giving the fighters less than what they deserve. So I- I'm not going to walk away from the sport anytime soon. I just have to find it deep inside of me to pick my camera back up, and hopefully, you know, on December 28th, I I rock this fight better than any other fight that I've ever shot in my life. And you've shot him for, I mean, years. For those who don't know, Don, on the phone, Don McGuire, MMA lockup, uh, he, he's done photography at every level and for years and years since before, uh, you know, most people even knew what mixed martial arts was, before it was even mixed martial arts, really. I yeah, mean, I th- that's um, fair to say. Yeah, it was, I, I shot in the UFC before it was the UFC. Um, I, I've been with three owners before that, and before that even, cons- you know, transpired, I was, uh, doing international shows with Ike Stafford, Ronnie Lewis, um, a lot of the kickboxers and Muay Thai fighters, um, you know, hence Chucho Box, Kazmarat Muay Thai, uh, Tiger Muay Thai, uh, Pia Thailand. Um, back in those days, a lot of us uh, American fighters, because I'm an ex-fighter myself, we we had to do the uh, the European and the Asian fight circuits just to even get a fight in in, in our style of arts. And it's it's great now to see that the sport is growing in the United States and, and more and more, uh, you know, people are, are coming and flocking to the sport and the sport's growing and, you know, it's not just a, a male-dominated sport anymore. Actually, it's, you know, the the market is anywhere from seven a seven-year-old kid to a, a 90-year-old grandmother, and, and, I, and I'm glad to see that. And, you know, a lot of people don't know that last year I was, at, you know, got the opportunity to shoot the first sanctioned uh, MMA fight in New York, you know, history um, with GPG and Victory Cage 1. Um, you know, that was the biggest honor in a long time that I had always wanted to do, but to be able to shoot the actual first, you know, legally sanctioned fight in New York State history was, was an honor. Um, I also have been inducted into four Hall of Fames in the last three, four months, and I personally don't believe that I belong in the Hall of Fame. Um, I've contacted several entities and, and, you know, let them know how I felt, and and they all said that I deserve it. Um, The sport wouldn't be the same without me and to embrace it. But I'm just a humble man, and I still consider myself just a photographer. Um, A lot of people say that I'm more than that, but I, I just like to be the man behind the man behind the man. But if it means that I can transpire uh, more fans and more states to, you know, to MMA and allow us to, you know, throw fights in their states and, and make it legal in every state in the United States, you know, that is, that's my ultimate goal. Yeah, it's it's the constant evolution, the constant uh, progress, I guess, of the sport, something something you've worked for for a long time. Uh, to, to get on to some of the recent, recent stuff, I, I kind of wanted to touch on this uh, – this UFC on Fox we had last weekend, I thought it was kind of an interesting show. For about the first two hours, you know, including the prelims and everything, for about the first three, four hours, there was not much going on, a whole lot of decisioning. And then right there at the end, it got a little bit crazy. You had uh, Uriah Faber, Michael McDonald. What, what did you think of that fight? Oh, brother. Um, I love that fight. First of all, um, not many people know that I, I got to do the, the road to the octagon. Um, you yourself know that I, I shot both camps and... Uh, uh. You know, I did partial, uh, you know, work for the Road to the Octagon for the UFC and uh, being able to meet with Michael McDonald and do an, an interview, you know, live at the Last Stand Fight Gym was, was an honor. And then uh, finishing it up at TAM with my with my brother Uriah. Um, I loved it, dude. It was, you know, because walking up into the fight, you know, Michael McDonald, love him to death, but he was calling Uriah Faber the old man of the sport and saying it was time for him to, to pass it down and... Uh, 
you know, me being, you know, close to 50, it was nice to see my brother Uriah go in there and, and just brutally dominate Michael McDonald. Uh, you know, I, I love Michael McDonald to death, but it goes to show you it doesn't matter how old you are, it just matters how much heart you got. And I'll tell you what, the California kid brought it, and that was one of my favorite things tonight. And, uh, you know, it was... Were, were you, were you, were you, were you, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but were you surprised at the way it unfolded? Because I thought, like, yeah, I could see Favor winning this fight. You know, I didn't think he was uh, overwhelmed by McDonald like some people were, were maybe intimating. I, I thought that, that, yeah, Favor could easily win this fight, but I kind of assumed if he would, it would be by closing the distance and just sort of beating him up, punking him like, you know, like old men do. But I didn't, I never thought he would stand on his feet right in front of him and just beat him the way he did. Yeah, Uriah even stated, and, and, you know, I listened to the interview that, that we did with Chris and Uriah, and, you know, it even caught Uriah off guard that, you know, he thought he was going to have to take it to the ground, but, um, you know, his stand-up has always been great. Um, when I was in the gym with him and, and he was uh, sparring with Chad Mendez and uh, Feely and James Henry and everybody was there, and it, it, it was just an awesome, awesome, you know, feeling to see Uriah, at, you know, at his peak condition. And, you know, that which brings up another point, too, and I don't mean to get off, you know, track here, but this has actually been, the last month and a half has been the month of Tam. I mean, you look at Chris Holdsworth winning Tough 18. Oh, yeah. Um, he, he's had Tam. Um, and just before that, Feely was coming off his UFC debut with a win. Um, and Chad then Mendes. the night, yeah, Chad Mendez won the night, you know, that Uriah fought. I mean, it's just been a wonderful, wonderful last month and a half for Tam, and I like to give him a great big O's because uh, I tell you what, to, to be able to dominate in the fight circuit like, like they are right now is, is a testament to the training that they're receiving at uh, Team Alpha Male. Yeah, you know, for, for our listeners who may not know, Tam, that's Team Alpha Male. Uh, like Don said, it's Uriah Faber's camp, the one he founded out in, in Sacramento. I guess, is in Sacramento? It's in, yes, in Sacramento. It's in It's in Sacramento. Uh, one thing I know, they brought on Dwayne Bang Ludwig in December of last year to be like their head trainer. And that's made, to me, in my opinion, from the outside looking, I think that's made a major difference. Cause like you said, man, alpha male, they are, they are on the upswing. That's a fact. Yeah. I think with, uh, you know, bringing the new training in and, uh, you know, changing things up, uh, I was really, really surprised at the quality of, of, of training that I've seen at team alpha male. And, uh, you know, like I said, with with Holdsworth winning the tough 18 was was a testament. I got to shoot him um, when I shot Uriah, and it was just like you know I saw it in the kid. I didn't know if he had the abilities to to beat his opponent, but you know you never know until that night. And yeah. you know the way things transpired were just awesome. And Tam's just been on fire ever since. And you know I I couldn't be any more prouder than than a group of guys than I am of them. They're they're probably one of the most humble gyms that I've ever shot at. And uh, yeah, the new training regimen that they got there is is second to none right now. And you know everybody else is going to have to step it up if they want to catch up with Tam in the next couple months here. <laughs> this this UFC on Fox Nine uh, just passed this last weekend. Half of the main card was won by Team Alpha Male Fighters. Chad Mendez gets the uh, decision win, really a, a dominant decision win over Nick Lentz. Uriah Faber completely dominates Michael McDonald in every facet of the game. Gets a big, big win there. I think, you know, obviously he's going to get the winner of Cruz Burrell, and, you know, he's fought both of them before, fought both of them to tough tough decision losses before. So, uh, boy, man, that, that Bantamweight division, like all of the, the smaller divisions, pretty much everything from flyweight to lightweight just – Deep, deep class, lots and lots of talents, you know, incredible contenders. All right, folks, you're listening to MMA Lockup. That's part one of our interview with Don McGuire, part two coming at the end of the show. Don't go anywhere. When we come back, Uriah Faber, the top Bantamweight contender, is up next with Chris Matthews on MMA Lockup. Make sure you check out the website, MMALockup.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at MMA Lockup. When we get back, Uriah Faber. Slam dunk! It's a touchdown! Nope. MMA lockup.
Welcome back, everybody. This is MMA Lockup on 1190 AM Fox Sports Radio, The Fan. Earlier in the show, we gave you the first part of my interview with UFC fight photographer Don McGuire. Here is the second part of that interview. When we left off before, I mentioned the depth of challengers and the ability and the the talent level of challengers in every one of the so-called small weight divisions, everything from flyweight up to lightweight. Speaking of flyweight... Maybe the most exciting fighter in the entire promotion. And obviously you talk about guys like Clay Guida and and Diego Sanchez, but I'm talking about a guy that holds a belt and that is just simply catch your attention every second he's fighting. Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson defended his flyweight title against Joseph Benavidez. And I was saying before the fight, I thought Johnson would win, but like don't sleep on Benavidez. I, I was like, Benavidez has the power. Maybe he can finish this with a punch. It turned out it went the other way, man. Just a short little left. Uh, Mighty Mouse just just dropped him. I mean, he was out when he hit the hit the uh, canvas. What, what did you think about Mighty Mouse's win and, and, and what you've seen from Mighty Mouse since he's been holding that title in, in the UFC? Well, you know, first of all, I like to reiterate what a lot of my colleagues seem to think, that uh, Mighty Mouse is probably one of the most underestimated uh, fighters in his weight class and has been for quite some time. Um, did I think he was going to beat Benavidez? Um uh, you know, I really didn't even give a pick on that one because, you know, I, as myself, I would like to see Mighty Mouse do it, but, you know, Benavides looked, he's been looking awfully good. Um, it, it was a fight that I thought could go either way. Um, I wanted Demetrius to win it, but, uh, you know, as far as picking it, I, I, I really couldn't go at, at it, you know, in an angle and, and come out ahead. But to see uh, Mighty Mouse pull it off, it just proved to the world that he is one of the, uh, the the greatest in that weight class, and he is one of the most underestimated fighters in that weight class. And I think we've got a lot more to see to come from him. And you know, I was very very shocked that it was just that. I mean, a little left. I mean, but you know, you go back to boxing like with George Foreman. You don't necessarily have to, you know, right. a hellacious punch or. Or anything like that, you can be like George Foreman and be, you know, have the power and, and hit somebody from four inches away and knock him out. And I think Mighty Mouse controls that type of power. And and I just I think he's underestimated. And I think now he's proven his point, and the world needs to give him his recognition and and props for for beating Benavides the way he did. Yeah, and, and you know, to me, the most impressive thing, like we've seen this a number of times, especially in the sport, but also in boxing. When a guy's coming forward and you catch him just right on the button, it doesn't take a huge punch to knock him down. What really, really like blew my mind with Mighty Mouse was by the time that the, the ref could step in, I believe it was Big John, but by the time the ref could bend over to like separate them that quickly, Demetrius landed four more punches. I mean, his speed and athleticism and precision and that combination and just his overall skill set, because, I mean, he's technically very, very sound. Uh, you know, when he fought Dodson, John, John Dodson, I, I thought that was, like, the best fight ever. I, I would honestly watch that fight, like, 12 times a year. You and me both, brother. I thought that was probably one of the best fights, you know, of, of his career. Um, I, I, you know, I look at Mighty Mouse and, and a lot of the, you know, different fighters that, you know, are in the, in the lighter weight classes. And I'll tell you what, you know, they, they truly bring it just like the heavyweights and the super heavyweights and even the light heavyweights. Um, I, I think those, the lighter fighters, you know, even down to straw weight, which you know as, as well as I do that I'm with MMA World Rankings and we've been pushing the UFC mm-hmm. to open a straw weight division. We finally got them to open a women's strawweight division, and now we're thoroughly pushing to get the, a men's strawweight division open. And I would like to know what the, the listeners have to think, you know, in regards to that. So if you can, you know, when this is posted, I would like for the listeners to, to you know, voice their opinion and, and see if they would like to have a men's strawweight division in the UFC. I think it's much needed. And honestly, I tell you, on the other side of, of the, the scale, you know, at the top of the scale, I'd like to see a super heavyweight class just because... Now, can you imagine, can you imagine by this point in the evolution having a young in his prime Shaquille O'Neal fighting against a young in his prime Dikembe Mutombo? You know what I mean? I, I think that some of the NFL players that had crossed over in the earlier days, you mm-hmm. know, pertaining to like Bob Sapp and, mm-hmm. and, and others, um, I think some matchmakers um, like to get sensationalized matches and, and they're not always fair um, as far as skill and, uh, you know, pertaining to the arts. Um, now Bob Sapp is a good friend of mine. Um, do I think he should have been a UFC fighter? No. Do I, uh, do I feel that 
um, they should allow, uh, you know, back in the day, if, if it would have happened, Shaquille O'Neal would have dominated. Um, there's a lot of different people that, you know, back in the day that, that were NFL players that did cross-train in, the, in, in Muay Thai and, and K-1 style fighting and even, you know, ground game, you know, aspects. And they would have loved to have been in the UFC, but it just wasn't an option at that time. Um, reiterating on your thought, um, you know, it would be, oh, the super heavyweight division would be just totally awesome if if a lot of, you know, NFL players or even uh, NBA players would cross over to that. Um, I'm thinking back to the day when, like, you know, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar uh, did his things with Bruce Lee. I mean, you know, I was in awe then uh, uh, of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I never thought he had that, you know, the talent or the mindset to even go, you know, to even fight against anybody like Bruce Lee. But, you know, it, it transpired, and, and it, it just left me in awe as a photographer and, and as, a, as a lover of the sport. Um, I would like to see more of, of people crossing over into the UFC or into just into the fight game in general from other sports. I think it would be uh, a great attribute for the fans, and I think it would be a great attribute for the sport in general. I agree 100%. I, to me, it, that that's the trajectory the MMA is on. Eventually, it's going to reach that point. It's going to be the biggest sport in the world, and, and you're going to get these kids that before they picked up a football at age five – and became the best athlete in the world. Now they're going to get in a gym at the age of five, and then they're going to be the best athlete in the world, but it's going to be an MMA instead of these other sports. We can talk about that for, for hours. As anyone who knows me knows, I will go at length about that, but we're running out of time here. <laughs> One last thing I wanted to cover, maybe jumping the gun a little bit, but i got to say I made the comment that this is the year of the fight of the years. It seems like this year there's been six or seven fights that you're like, man, that's, that's fight of the year. So I'm going to ask you, Don McGuire, to me my top three – Diego Sanchez versus Gilbert Melendez. I think that's number one. I think you got Hunt and Bigfoot at two. And then I think you got uh, John Jones, Alexander Gustafson at three. Those, to me, are the three best fights I've seen there. What about you? Do you have any that stick out this year? Actually, I, I, I'm in concurrence with you. Um, the only thing is is the year isn't over yet. Right. Um, like I did a post on my on my page the other day. Um you know, we all know now that, that Silva's chin is susceptible. Um, we all know that um, Weedman's not going to be, you know, as sparingly to, to jump in and, and bang with him as he was um, last time because, you know, um, this, is a, this is a true fight game. And, and to go in there and, you know, act like it's a WWE event, it, it got Silva knocked out. Um, I still possibly think that that might end up being the fight of the year for me. Um, simply because uh, Chris Whedon is going to come in there ready to bang. Um, Silva has a point to prove to the world now. Um, is he an old man, or can he hand, you know, handle the, the you know, onslaught from Weidman? My fight of the year, though, so far would have to be Bigfoot Hunt from the two Warriors just completely just banging it out. And it, I think that was probably one of the best fights I've seen in the last 10 years. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. With you. Like I said, it's 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 been the year of the fights where it's like every month you have a fight where you're like, in any other year, that's your fight of the year, and it's you know the race is over already. This year, it's like, boy, they just keep on coming. Oh yeah, they. Uh, I tell you what, this it's, is this has probably been one of the best best years for fight of the years for the UFC, and and you know, you know, I'm just I'm in awe every time lately when. You know, it really started for me when uh, Vitor Belfort came out and, and, and won with it, you know, when he added the kicks to his arsenal and did the spinning back kick and, and knocked out his opponent. And he's come back, you know, once since then and, and won again. And, you know, a lot of the older stable fighters are realizing now that these younger guys aren't playing and uh, they need to step up the game or, or you know, or step out to the pasture. Um, I think this fight will be a deciding, you know, deciding moment for Silva um, if Weidman goes out there and beats him again like he did last time, and I know for a fact that he's been wanting to go down in weight, um, and the UFC hasn't really allowed that um, because they, they like to keep their pinnacle fighters in, in the weight class oh, that sure. they're at. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I can also see Silva's side of it, too. You know, you've been the champion for 13 years in that weight class. Um, you know, you kind of get to the point where, you know, is there going to be anybody that can beat me? So he went out there and he showboated and, and he got knocked out. Now, was that the true Anderson Silva that we all know? No. Um, yes, we're, we're used to his antics, but um, I even think he got caught by surprise with, with Chris's power 
And I, I truly think that this might end up being the fight of the year. Well, Don, I can't disagree. I, I absolutely can't. I, I think, again, there's been so many this year, but you're right. This this could be it. Folks, you're listening to MMA Lockup. Make sure you check out the website, MMALockup.com. Also, follow us on Facebook and Twitter, at MMA Lockup. Don, it's always fantastic to get to talk to you. It's a wonderful having you uh, on the show, having you on the team. You're an asset and a friend, brother, and I really appreciate you. Well, I, I appreciate that, and, and I love you guys like family, and uh, you know, I'm glad to be a part of the team. And I would just like to say one more thing before I, I get out of here. And, and you know, Joe Camacho, uh, I'm going to miss you, brother. And, and if anybody that knows him, um, can you please reach out to his family and uh, show the love and show the support that Joe has showed to so many people in, in this business and, you know, just give without our expectation. And, and, you know, that way our brother in heaven can relax and know that his family's taken care of. You got to keep your eyes on what's important in life. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, on, on my way out of here, I, like I said, I just like to thank you for your professionalism. I, I, I like to thank MMA Lockup for allowing me to be part of the family. And, uh, here's so long prosperous, uh, relationship between me and MMA Lockup and, and give a shout out to the Springfield Fight Club and and Smitty's Midwest Boxing and and a shout out to Shannon App and and thank you for coming on the show and 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 giving us an interview and I think you know like I said we'll see what happens on December 28th and uh, we'll have a heck of a show from that. That was Don McGuire, mixed martial arts, Muay Thai, boxing, a little bit of everything, fight photographer. Folks, thanks for tuning in with us today. Uh, big thanks to Shannon Knapp, president and founder of Invicta Fighting Championships. Big thanks to Uriah Faber, UFC Bantamweight, everyone that came on the show this week. Obviously, Don McGuire, number one at ringside, number one in our hearts. This is MMA Lockup, folks. Until next week, don't forget, if you're the last one out, turn off the lights and lock it up. Mm-hmm.